Billy Edward Albert Meyer was born in Bulak, Switzerland on February 3, 1937. For over 50 years, he has maintained a series of physical and telepathic contacts with extraterrestrial beings who claim they come from the Plagiaris star cluster. Acting as a mediator and spokesperson for the Pleiadians Plagiarans from Planet Era, Edward Meyer imparts their fascinating, esoteric teachings and wisdom to us and assists them in their monumental task of guiding Earth mankind back to the path we have left so long ago. Billy's contacts with extraterrestrials began at age 5 when he was prepared for his life's work through the teachings of Svath, an extraterrestrial man from the Plagiaris. Ask it, Billy's second contact person, continued his education for another 11 years, guiding him through many lands on Earth to learn about terrestrial beliefs and cultures. On January 28, 1975, he began a series of over 100 contacts with Sam Jace, a female Pleiadian slash Plagiaran. During several contacts Billy was allowed to photograph her beamship during flight maneuvers. He took over 1,000 of the clearest photos of extraterrestrial spacecraft ever seen. The actual contact conversations were written down word for word and contain many interesting facts on Earth history, humanities, sciences, and spiritual topics. Billy Meyer's UFO photos remain unparalleled for their clarity and sheer number. Several variations of the Pleiadian slash Plagiaran beamships were photographed at various remote locations in the Swiss countryside, mostly between 1975 and 1982. For the bulk of his photos, Billy used a camera that was easy for him to operate, having only one arm, an Olympus 35 ECR still camera. He also filmed several sequences using an 8mm movie camera. Billy also used another camera, with variable focus, to take the photos of the wedding cake ships as well as with a video camera. Billy Myers freely available UFO films and photos. And despite all efforts by skeptics to this day to duplicate them, Myers material remains irreproducible. This film was taken by Billy Meyer in 1976, long before computers and digital effects. Billy Meyer zooms in on the UFO, and we see two lights go on and off in broad daylight. And you're now listening to the actual sound of the craft. These are some of Meyer's authentic, still irreproducible films of actual extraterrestrial UFOs that the government doesn't want you to see, to know about, or to think about. Yet the Pentagon couldn't find this free evidence and information despite spending $110 million of your money. Billy Meyer is also the source of the most abundant, specific, and accurate prophecies in all of human history. Now that you know, the only question is what you will do about it. Claims that his first contacts with extraterrestrials took place when he was only a five-year-old boy. That there is more photographic evidence and, and, and video evidence for this particular case than any other existing case. And it's, it's, it's almost so good that you're just like, holy cow. When he took a lot of this, this material, took these photos, there was no Photoshop, there were no home computers. If these had been hoaxes, his designs for these craft are quite interesting. These official contacts with extraterrestrials taking hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of photographs and films and everything else that followed the skeptics would like us to believe 
way they fly? No, this was a demonstration flight, and some of what was accomplished here was the characteristic and to be expected movements would come from an object, a pendulum like object, an object on a string. And then we see these other smooth and flowing movements as the UFO is moving about the tree. We're told that this was done for a couple of reasons. One, to actually demonstrate flight in a terrestrial environment, and two, to also give an out to skeptics who would have to say this cannot be an object from outer space, it would be too threatening to their belief systems. However, at a certain point, we can actually see the top of this tree swaying under the backwash of the UFO. And if we look back at the very opening of this film, we will notice that there's a great deal of space between the UFO and the sky, making it very, very unlikely that it could be an object suspended on a string. And why is this film so, like, blurry and, like, it's like an old film. I mean, what well, is it is an old film, shot in 1975 on a snowy and rainy day, according to Meyer, and shot from a distance. So what we're seeing here is uh, a, a rather poor quality film, to be sure, and we're just having to make the best of it ourselves in our understanding. Is this tree still there today? The tree is no longer there, as is the case in a couple of uh, the other films and photographs that Meyer took. And what do we see here? Here is a clearer, a much clearer film segment that Meyer took with a UFO hovering above a road. And we can see a car moving slowly to the left in the bottom. Oh yeah, that white sort of, dot there, yeah. The white dot. We're going to see another one in a moment. We also notice that there is a tree branch with some leaves to the left. Meyer was encouraged oftentimes to have objects in the foreground for perspective and calculating the distance. Here the craft has moved suddenly to the left and it's exhibiting a characteristic floating motion that we're told is really the craft riding on the magnetic field of the Earth. We dissolve here into Meyer's UFO as it too is exhibiting that type of hovering pulsing movement on the magnetic field of the Earth as he was told. Now watch as the object will suddenly dart away in one frame disappearing from view. How is that possible? Meyer was told that they have technologies that allow them to move out of phase, out of dimension, within a part of a second. They can not only move out of dimension that quickly, they can also pop back into dimension. When the films were examined at Nippon TV, they discovered that indeed there had been no cutting and that the object not only disappears in one frame, but pops back in in one frame just as suddenly as you see here. So where does it go while it's gone? Well, that's a good question. As we observe it here disappear one more time, we can wonder just exactly where it goes. I don't have an answer for it. That's Billy Meyer in the lower uh, middle of the film. He's walked into the film. He'd set up his camera on the tripod as we again see one of the UFOs hovering in the distance. And again, notice that it has this movement, the slight pulsing up and down movement as it rides on the magnetic field of the Earth. And this film? This film, Meyer has the UFO as it comes in closer. He also zooms in on it a bit and we will see two very dramatic effects of a light flashing there from ah, the top. There, yeah. You see it? And then from the rim of the ship. Why, why is it flashing? That was not explained. As a matter of fact, when Meyer mentioned to them, uh, to the extraterrestrials, they were surprised at that effect and they wanted to see the film too. We, we see it again go on there. Now, as you watch this film, in a moment you're going to be able to observe more clearly that the craft is actually above the Earth. There's a, a bit of a hill or mountain uh, just below the time codes there. So clearly this was photographed outside. This was filmed outside. And this is one of the films that the owners of Uncharted Territory the Academy Award-winning special effects house, uh, they viewed this film and determined that it was not a hoax. In this film, we see three of the UFOs, again in the distance, with, with tree branches in the foreground, as they hover at slightly different angles in relationship to each other, exhibiting again the pulsing movement and changing distance ever so minutely between them. Uncharted Territory said that if they could duplicate Meyer's films, they would have to go to CGI to do it, 
because these clearly are not models. And what is this right here? This is the beginning of a series of photographs that Meyer took of what's called a light or energy ship, allegedly piloted by beings from the Andromeda galaxy who are partially physical and partially non-physical, very high-level, high-energy beings. They did not communicate directly with Meyer, and he could not communicate with them. Interestingly enough, Lee and Britt Elders, two of the original investigators on the case, claimed that they also saw a phenomenon in the night skies like this in Switzerland while they were investigating the case. Photoshop expert David Biedney claimed that Meyer had simply used a light fixture photographed against the black background to hoax these photographs, in particular one that he claimed was a double exposure. When another special effects movie expert who'd been in the business for 50 years viewed the same photograph that we're about to see in just a moment, he said that it was not a double exposure at all, but a triple exposure that must have been taken accidentally in camera. When Mr. Biedney was challenged to duplicate this photo to prove his point, he declined to even try. Is it this photograph right here? This is the one. Now, in the next one, this one, which is clearly not a double exposure, Mr. Biedney wouldn't even comment on it. This poses a problem for the skeptics because it clearly was not done outside the camera. And what is this thing that looks so interesting? Well, that's our wedding cake UFO. This was the only other landed UFO that Meyer was able to take photographs of. And interestingly enough, in very much the same location as the energy ship when it was photographed uh, in the previous photographs right above the center. We see here a more clear view of the base of the ship taken from this angle. And as we get closer to it, even a little more clarity. These photos of the wedding cake UFO were called hoaxes by many people who thought that it was merely a garbage can lid with various appliances and, and uh, accessories somehow put onto it. However, when the original investigators were able to calculate the measurement, it turned out to be some 10 feet in diameter. When they took these photos to a metallurgist to ask if he could reproduce it in 1980 or 81, he said it would cost about $25,000 to make this object. Here, an even larger wedding cake UFO is photographed over a van on Meyer's property, and Meyer photographs it as well from underneath. These are very controversial photographs of the wedding cake UFO glowing a golden color at night. Here you can see various artifacts, trees, and perhaps light poles in the background. In this next photograph, Meyer has a close-up of it, even larger, closer to the camera, and here, a telemeter disc moves off to the side, and the photograph of the tree and the car caused problems for skeptics who claim that this is really just a model tree and a model car. Here we can see the most dramatic of those photos as Meyer photographs focusing on the distant large UFO, which is behind the car and not in front of it. Here the object is now clearer, hovering, and we can see the base of the UFO at night as it glows golden color with various protuberances underneath. In this next photograph, the center or the core, the top core of the UFO, the sleeve has been extended. If you take your time to do some measurements on it, you'll see that it's actually a different configuration. When was this video taken? This was taken in 1981, outside. Meyer has the uh, camera set up. This is his first video camera. And the UFO here is about two to three hundred feet in the distance, as best we can calculate. Meyer snaps some of the photographs here. He'll then leave the frame. He'll go out of frame again for a while before coming back in. Some skeptics had claimed that this was really false perspective, that it was a small model tree set up close to the camera. For anybody that's been to Switzerland, and rural parts as well, and especially uh, near where Meyer lives, many solitary trees appear on these hillsides. And they look uh, all too, too good to be true, unless you're familiar with the fact that there's a very vibrant life force. The trees are clear, solitary in many occasions here. This solitary tree has the UFO hovering virtually motionlessly in front of it. How is that possible uh, in the other film that it was moving here? It's like standing still. Well, it seems that the UFOs can be controlled consciously by the Playaren. People have to think that through for themselves and see if they accept that idea.
These are the only known photographs taken from within a UFO above the Earth with two other UFOs visible. Meyer took these from inside Semyazi's ship. In this final photograph, we even get a clearer view of the Earth and land below. 